All right, so we're going to do a little um, intro to limits here. So kind of the first major topic of calculus needed to do um, derivatives and, you know, basically uh, a lot of things that uh, we get to we need to use limits for. But anyways, limits. Um, we've kind of, you know, heard the word limits in life a lot, speed limits and so forth, and limit stopping. This is a little bit different. Um, a limit of a function, I'm just kind of, this isn't a formal definition, but basically um, you're looking at um, as, the, as the function, you know, approaches a certain x value, and that will be given to you, as I'll show you in just a minute here, um, what y value is that function approaching? So there's kind of certain types of limit problems we generally look at, but, I mean, just to make it, you know, somewhat simple here in, in terms of what the notation will look like, so you can kind of see what's going on, let's just say we have the limit um, as x approaches 2 of x squared. So again, this is read the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared. The limit as x approaches 2 of x squared. So what this means is, as this function right here, so whatever the function is listed to the right here, approaches 2, as the x value approaches 2, what is the y value approaching? Now this one is kind of a straightforward one because there's no hole in the graph, as you'll see, is kind of a common theme with limits. I'm hoping to give you a problem. And, and it's good because that's a, what happens generally from the derivative usage. But, you know, this graph, y equals x squared, is just a parabola. And this is just a basic sketch of it. This is not by any means to scale or anything. But, you know, we should know that as x approaches 2, I mean at 2, the y value of this function is 4. And now that doesn't necessarily mean that the limit's going to be 4, but in this case it works out that way. So, you know, basically as you approach 2 from the left and the right hand side, so let's say 2 is right here, so that's the point 2, 4. So if you approach 2 from the left and the right hand sides with your fingers, the y value that's approaching from both sides is um, 4. Okay? Now, I said a second ago here, about the hole in the graph thing, so let me just uh, mention something about that real quick, just so you can kind of see what I'm trying to say. Um, a lot of times they will do um, something such as this. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this example right here. So again, this is red, the limit is x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So um, a little more complicated function than the x squared one we just looked at, um, but the same idea, you know, goes with limits here. So what this means is as x is approaching 1 on this function, you know, from the left and the right hand side, that's important that it's from both sides, um, what is the y value approaching? So it would be a good idea, for, you know, if you have your graphing calculator available, you know, stop this real quick in just a minute and put this function right here in your graphing calculator. Make sure you put parentheses around the top and parentheses around the bottom so it's all graphed correctly. And I want you to kind of try and zoom in a little bit on, um, on the x value 1. So, for instance, you could maybe just use a zoom feature or you could use the window and you could make, put the window maybe going from the x min going from 0, the x max going up to 2, since that, then 1 would be right in between those. And just to let you know for the y's, if you went from the, the y min, if you did that at 2, and the y max at 4, that would be a good window to look at this, just the section of the graph that's right around x equals 1. So again, if you have your graphing calculator, pause it and put that in your calculator real quick, okay, and look at that. Okay, so now you've either put it in your calculator or not. This graph right here, in general, kind of looks like this, it's, and it's just a sketch. It looks like a parabola, but one thing that I kind of left out there, let's say that 1 is right here, so if you graph this on your calculator, you should have noticed at 1, there is a hole in this graph. I'm kind of exaggerating on this, on the calculator you just kind of see a, a pixel missing. 1 isn't lined up too well there. But, so this is be at, at x equals 1. And, you know, if you look up here at this function, it makes sense that there's a hole in the graph, because if you plug 1 into the denominator, it's 0 on the bottom, and we all know that a function, you know, when it's zero on the bottom is not defined. So at x equals one, there is no y value to this function. So this is where limits can come in handy because 
the limit, as I've said before, is, you know, as the x value approaches this value of 1 from the left and right, what's the y value? So it doesn't mean what is the value actually at 1, because you see there's a hole in the graph here. So from the, if we approach 1 from the left and the right hand side with our fingers, we can still see that from the left and the right hand side, they both seem to approach the same value, which, you know, over here, if you're on your calculator, you can see that, you know, that looks to be about 3 right there. Now, obviously, we're eyeballing it on the calculator. It's hard to know if that's exact. But from the left and the right hand side, it seems to be about 3, okay? So, you know, just by visual, it seems like, okay, the limit of that's probably 3. Now, so this is kind of looking at it graphically. We're going to look at it with a table here, okay, numerically. And this is, again, uh, I'd recommend using a graphing calculator on this. So, what I want to do is I just want to analyze some numbers here. So I want to make a chart of x and y values, okay? And I'm going to, I want to approach 1, the x value 1, from the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So let's first work from the left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a number that's close to 1, but on the left-hand side of it. So like 0 0.9. That's pretty close to 1, but on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to choose a number that's even closer to that, like 0 0.99. And then the number even closer than that, 0 0.999. I can't remember how many nines I'm saying. And so what I'm doing, I'm trying to figure out here, so as the x value is approaching 1, I want to figure out what is the y value approaching. So what I'd like you to do is actually go through and fill this chart out and figure out the y values for it. And also, you want to do it from the, um, you know, from the left hand, uh, from the right hand side as well, which is right hand side meaning values that are greater than one. So, like for instance, you might choose 1.1, 1.01, 1.001. So again, 1.1 is just to the right of one. 1.01 then gets closer to one. It approaches one. 1.001 gets closer to one. So these values are approaching one as well, but from the left side. I'm sorry, from the right side. This approaches from the left side, this approaches from the right side. So go ahead and take a second, fill this chart out, pause this video for a second, because you're going to see in just a minute that these are all going to be just filled in. Okay, so make sure you do that, and we'll go from there. Okay, so hopefully you paused it and put them in, and if you didn't, here they are. But uh, you can see here that as the x values from the left-hand side of 1, so again, here's, here's 1, so on the graph, if I'm actually on the graph, you know, 0.9 is going to be right around here, just to the left of that hole. And what I'm doing is I'm figuring out what is the y value is getting as I get closer and closer to that value 1. So you see here, it started out as this 2.7 number, 0.9, went to 0.99, so it kind of made a big jump in there, okay, nothing real clear. Then it went to this 2.997, and, um, you know, didn't make as big of a jump there. Probably a good idea in this case, I would recommend. Um, since it's not super clear at this point, do another one. Go 0 0.9999. And what you should see at that point is that it's probably looking like it's 2.9999 or something, or it might even round it at that point to 3. Your calculator might round it because it goes out so far in 2.9 repeated. But um, you, know, you should see that the, the y value seems to be getting closer to 3, but it doesn't look like it's be actually going over 3. And you can see from the other side here, at 1.1, it was 3.3, and the same idea happened. It got closer and closer to 3, and if you did, again, 1.0001, you should notice, like, it's now 3.00003 or something like that. And it's very, very close to 3, but it doesn't look like it's ever going to, you know, go less than 3. So, both from the left side and from the right side, as the x values approach 1, the y values also are approaching 1. All right, so I know that was kind of lengthy there, but uh, that's the basic idea of limits. Again, um, you know, you're looking at as the x value approaches, in this case, 1 from the left and the right-hand side, what's the y value approach? Okay, let's go ahead and continue to look at limits graphically here. So we looked at, we've looked a little bit graphically, and we also did a table, which is looking at it numerically. But, um, you know, what we can see here, here's a, here's a function f of x. So these lines right here depict this function. Okay, um, and so what I've asked in part A here is to find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. Okay, to find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. So what that means is, as this function approaches 0, the x value approaches 0 from the left and the right hand side, what is the y value approaching? 
Now, I notice, you know, at zero, there's no hole in the graph, there's no nothing, but, you know, from the left and the right-hand side, they both go to the same place, so you can see here that this function, this function, the limit is negative two as x approaches zero. Okay, the x values, as the x values approach zero, the y values approaching negative two. And it happens that there's a point there at negative two, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean um, that that's gonna be the limit, as we'll see in just a second. In part B here, we can, it's asking us to find the limit of f of x as x approaches one. Okay, well, one seems to be kind of right where that hole in the graph is, but if I look from the left side and from the right side, and I approach one, the x value one from the left and the right hand side, they both close in on the same um, y value, and it looks to be, you know, this graph isn't perfect, but it looks to be negative one. That's what it's meant to be at least. Okay, so that limit is negative one. And notice here, in this case, there's a hole in the graph. So the function actually, you know, doesn't have a value at x equals one, but it still has a limit. Okay. Um, for part C, it says x is equal as the find the limit as x approaches three. Well, here's x equals three. Now the graph does something weird here. It splits apart. Okay, and you'll see this with limit problems from time to time. So from the left hand side, as I approach the x value three, it seems like my y value is approaching one. From the right hand side of three, so you know right hand side is values that are larger than three, I approach. Uh, that, that x value 3, seems like my y value is negative 1. So this is a case right here where the limit does not exist. And I'll just write DNE for does not exist. Okay? So, you know, if the, if the left-hand limit, and the left-hand limit was the example I show where I, you know, put my finger on the left-hand side and said, oh, that's 1, and the right-hand limit, where I put my finger here and said that's negative 1, if they don't agree, then the limit does not exist. So that's an example. We'll look at some more examples where the limit doesn't exist in just a second. <clears throat> so um, going back to, to this real quick, I just want to clarify some things because there's, you know, they love to be conceptual on the AP stuff and we'll throw stuff out at you like this. So, you know, notice in this first case here for part A, again, that um, in this case, you know, the actual function at zero equal two. So in this case, f of zero was actually equal to two, and it happened to be, I'm sorry, negative two. f of zero was negative two, and it happened to be that the limit also is negative two. But in this case right here, at one, notice the, this was, you know, f of one, I mean, it's, it doesn't exist. It's, you know, non-existent. There's no point there in the graph. There's a hole in the graph. So I just want you to, to realize that if, if the information is given in a problem, because they'll do this sometimes, that, oh, you know, for this function, um, f of 5 is equal to 7, and they might somehow bring limits into that, don't automatically assume that the limit is equal to 7 as x approaches 5. Because, you know, it's, it's not necessarily true. Like, especially look at this case in part C. Well, at x equals 3, you know, up here there's an open circle, so that isn't, there's no value there, but right here there's a closed circle, meaning that f of 3 for this function, and I know it doesn't line up perfectly, but f of 3 is actually equal to negative 1. So here the limit, uh, I'm sorry, the, the function actually equaled negative 1, but the limit did not exist. So notice how there really is no correlation between the function, the, the, you know, the value of the function at that point, and the limit. You know, I mean, sometimes it might be that they're the same, but not necessarily. So I want you to make sure we, we know that point.